Hi there, so now that we have addressed the basic stuff, let's move to something a little bit uh, more complicated. Remember, all the previous knowledge that you, you have is perfectly transferable to Open Final 11, okay? So you need to change a few things here and there, so that is what we're going to do in this case. This is a classical case, I love this case, the cylinder case. I address a lot of stuff here, okay, I'm not going to address, I'm going to go to the basics, but just to remind you that this case, if so you go to our website here, you have the training in the finite volume method, uh, let me go here, you have a lot of trainings that we have developed, and the one, <clears throat> find a volume this one and you can download all the training material you have the tutorials and all the designs and so on okay open font 10 and if you want you can take that that case and then convert it to open file 11 you will see that it's quite quite straightforward so what we're going to to address is the classical cylinder case okay so this is what we have again you know that Depending on the range of number, you can have different behaviors from steady and steady. And I'd like to use this case to address one question everybody asks, okay? Uh, when do you know that your solution has converged? And some people say, did your solution converge? And it's a very relative question. No, it depends how you measure convergence because if you are running on a steady case, it will never converge. Now you have all the, all, all the oscillations you are running in a steady case, yeah, it will converge. But this is the section la rather than the rural industrial cases. So it's a very relative question. But in any case, I don't, don't want to, to discuss that. So in this case, for instance, you need to uh, learn to how to differentiate between on a steady and a steady physics. So if you have an on a steady physics, my advice is to use no on a, on a steady approach. So see here that on a steady physics, Okay, and we're using on a steady solver or on a steady approach, and you are capturing your, your, your the right physics, okay? So from iteration to iteration, your solution is not going to converge, but your linear, linear solvers are converging. Instead, when you look at here, you have on a steady physics with a steady solver. You are getting a solution, but the solution is not right. It doesn't manage to, to capture the physics. So here, your linear, uh, linear solvers, okay, they are, it's not convergence to a steady state, okay? So your initial residual is never going to get to the final one taking the iterative approach, okay? It's a little bit difficult if you are new to understand this one, but if you look at this plot plotter, we, we get it better. So this is your residuals, okay, crunching numbers, okay? We don't look anymore at the colors, but this is what is happening when you are solving, okay? On a steady solvers, and see that you have initial residual. You start to iterate with a with, with a initial value or previous iteration, and see that your linear solver is always going to converge or likely and this is what we hope okay most of the time this is what we happens uh it will converge to the final residual so in this case we have final residual 10 to the minus 6 to pressure and 10 to the minus 8 to to to, to velocity and the other quantities okay so this is a steady solver and then when you go to a steady solver it's something similar but the idea in a steady solver is that the initial residuals if you have a an actual uh a steady solution, the initial residuals should go down to the final residual. But that will never happen here, okay? As you see, 200 will never happen. Okay, so as I say, this is very difficult. It's very relative to that question. Did it converge? Okay, it depends how you measure that and how you want to look at that. But this is a valid question, okay? If you validate it, also, it will not be right, but is you have colors, everything works fine, okay? So then you go and you have the sampling, and look at what happens when you sampling and compare, you no know, the frequencies of a drag coefficient in this case, see that in the steady case, it will underestimate a lot that value. And same with the lift coefficient, okay? The average value will be ar ar around zero, but then the amplitude or standard deviation, whatever you want to measure, is quite different, okay? Be careful about that. And let's move now. What happens when you have an actual steady physics? Okay, this is what we want, but in these trial applications, not very often you find that at this, but sometimes you can make the approximation and we can talk about like a say with your say so the steady solution or meet steady mid on a steady flow and so on. Okay, so this is what happens here, a steady physics on a steady solver, a steady physics, a steady solver. Okay, here Reynolds low, and you will see that both solvers are going to converge. So here I'm solving time, here I'm just iterating, okay? You can say, or we can say that a steady will be like infinite time set, okay? We're using kind of a uh, infinite time set, and we get 
a good solution and when we look at the uh, residuals okay crunching number look at what what is happening here okay a steady and a steady and this is what we have the, the, what, what we want now this is a typical behavior in a steady physics so initial residuals are going to converge or are going to arrive to your final residuals when you reach this one it means that you have an actual steady solution this is tricky this is difficult to find okay not always you are going to to get that there but it can happen a steady on a steady okay so in this case it is better to use an steady solver it, it is more efficient but still you can use an on a steady solver in the other case the on a steady physics okay you have this one it is better to use an on a steady solver okay this one is not converging, and as you can see here, it is underestimating or, over, over, or, or overestimating the values. And when I say it's not converging, meaning that in the idea of an steady solver that it should arrive to the final residuals, you are not getting there, okay? But it is up to you, okay? So this is the what, what I wanted to cover there, okay? In this physics, it's always this question. So let's go to the case, and we have we have it here so you have the pdf there if you want as well so you have steady on a steady solution so let me go to the to the steady and remember here the solvers is pretty, pretty much the same as open fontaine you will need to do some modifications so let me go here and you have insisting to folders depending to what you want to run so uh we have the usual scripts to do to run everything okay so let's recap what is happening here so i will run first it stays always rain of 20 and just moving files nothing changed the only modification that we did here it is in the dictionaries in this case control d okay and let me go sb solution okay so we have control dictionary and remember that you add this here and then choose your solver okay so go to your table here and where do we have multiple solvers and according to you what you want to do so in this case we're still in compressible fluid so and this one is valid for the previous pimple piece and simple phone everything is valid here okay so we're going to use this one okay Okay, you can click there and you can get the description also. You go to the actual source code and so on. And here you have you now solver model for a steady or transient torrent. So, so far we haven't done any torrents. So the next case we'll do that, but it's pretty much the same. Okay, that, that part, those models is, is the same as the previous versions. Okay, so let's move here and just let's revisit the control did. Okay, so to make it clear in this case, we didn't do any modification. So boundary conditions stay the same, constant stays the same. Okay, it's physical properties, remember. So just do the transition. It is still, you have backward compatibility to the previous, I think it was transport properties, but do the transition now to, to the latest one. And then in system, we only uh, change here control did sb skins remains the same okay and sb solution also pretty much it is the same however i want to stress remind you that piso doesn't exist anymore so here we have the simple keyword and the pimple those two exist but piso that completely disappear so in this case we're going to use the simple okay or you can use the pimple pseudo transient so later another tutorial on that so the big modifications were here application phone run and then solver and that's all so remember that here phone run is going to run everything just to show you set fields we're using here to initialize the flow just to add kind of a perturbation in our flow to onset faster that instability if there is an instability in this case there is no instability you're going to see how that kind of perturbation is going to damp very fast Okay, so in control D, we have this. So here I put uh, everything exactly the same. Da, 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 da. Then the function objects here. I, I put now the location where you have the. Okay, let me put here is templates. Okay, just a misspell something. So as usual, I had off a script. So. I like when I make mistakes. So you have here the locations you want to see keywords and so on, how to set up function like this. And I just to point out why I'm putting this one here because there are small modifications, okay? So you need to update your functions objects, okay? So for instance, I mentioned that this case is uh, uh, open phone 11 is almost the same as in open phone 10, but sometimes you have some, some errors. So just to show you here, I already updated everything. All right, hope nothing is going to happen, nothing bad. So I'm going to run open phone 10. Block mesh is perfect. You can use sec field also perfect. But when you try to run 
pimple font, see that it's going to give me this error. Why? Because in open font 10, it was this keyword region type. Now it's not anymore region type. Now it's called select. Okay, so you select where you want to apply that or whatever. In this case, I want to compute that in this patch. Okay, so these are the things that you need to update. So let me go back to open phone 11. And remember, here is phone run and it's going to run perfectly there. Okay, so I will run, as I say, run all. Okay, here, sorry, I am in the, on the steady case. Let me move to the steady case and let me run. I'm not going to run all cases just to show you. We already saw the colors. We know what we're going to, to spec. Uh, Reynolds 20, okay, ta -ta 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 -ta. Ronald, Reynolds 20, okay, so it's running, uh, and in the directory also just to explain a little bit what you have there and when you enter, so if when you see this part of you, you have here an estate just to visualize everything, and then you have these scripts to, to plot the solution and so on, so let me show you in this case, it's very handy okay to use I have a new plot script there okay in the script zero so you go like this new plot script zero and pa -pa 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 plot okay should be uh, plot. Ah. okay so it's going to plot on the fly the coefficients okay so this the information is safe in the same format as the previous version so what we can see here is that we're running and this is a clear indication that the solution is a study, okay? So the, your lift coefficient, drag coefficient, or your forces, you are not oscillating, or whatever you are monitoring is not oscillating, okay? So that you can monitor everything that's there. Also, you look at the solution, you have all your function subject, you have here the mass flow, what is coming in, is coming out. So I put many of them, I computed also average, Okay, so just to go through here, so this one mass flow, so this change it, these two keywords change it from open phone 10. Okay, so let's see if I remember all the modifications that I have to do. So that will be a little bit annoying that you need to update that part. So this pretty much is the same. Uh, Feel average also, it changed a little bit. I, I recall it was clean restart, something like that. Here also this base now is outside this, this bracket. So there are small modifications for field average. Okay, uh, you can go now here you have now the lo location of the source code so you can see what you need, need to put there. Forces yeah, remains pretty much the same and mink max also this remain the same and open from 10. Okay, so you will have, yes, the select, select uh, is new so you will need to do that. So that where you want to compute that object. So remember that you can have region, face region, say sub regions and so on. So pretty much it's the same. Uh, also, well, this is a steady. When we move to an steady, you can have the adjustable time step. Okay, that works exactly the same. The only thing is that pimple phone, pistol phone, that stuff disappeared. Okay, so we have a solution, I think. Okay, so everything cool, everything okay. And let me launch Parafone works exactly in the same way to run in parallel also the, the same way. Okay, just to remind you that I run in serial, but to run in parallel is just phone run and put your your number of processors, the, the compose part dictionary, it is the same. And if I go here, load state, I will go part of you, say there, okay. And there you go, open the file and this is it. Okay, so I would like to go to the first answer because I want to show you, you know that here I have that initialization that I mentioned that I added. Okay. So if you see there, we have Y components. So I added you no know, an initialization here. So that will set an instability in the flow. So in this case, it is a steady. So that instability will be done quite fast. Okay, and it will get, go to the steady state. Okay, so this is what we want. Now these are solutions really fast, and this is here's where it's very efficient to use a steady solvers. And yes, in these cases, they are going for those that are using the the, the work uh, conversions. Okay, it's going to converge, meaning that your initial residual it is going to converge to the final residual, or it go, going to go down, knowing that. 
monotonic way to the final residual and this is a clear indication that you have an unsteady flow but that is the section okay so most of the time you are going to have oscillations and it might be the case that the steady will be able to capture that depending on the frequency so in this case you have no frequencies no shedding frequencies that are too high so the steady solver is not the appropriate one but so you're working with airflow uh, with airfoils you will realize that in airfoil we can use the steady because there the, there is some separation but it's the, those frequencies are not very high so we can use that one okay with no problem okay so this was the steady case exactly the same as you use the 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 uh on a steady solar by the way here you have you no know, we we just run with a Reynolds 20, which is the steady case, is you go with a Reynolds 200, the flow becomes uh, fully transient there. So you can still run there, nothing changed, but you are not capturing the right physics. And now let me move to the on a steady case. So here, let, let's move to run, it's pretty much the same, nothing changed, okay? So the scripts, you have everything set up there, moving the files, okay? The functional objects is exactly the same. The main difference here will be between these two cases is that if you go SV schemes, you have here a steady, and if you go here, which pretty much is the same as previously, nothing changed, you have backward. Okay, the difference now is this. Okay, so I hope now you are getting this muscle memory that the, modifi the actual modification is not that that big and um, probably will make things easier but as you were doing previously a lot of parameterization and so on you will need to update your script but it's not that a big of a deal function objects there are a few things that you need to move here and there as we saw in the previous <laughs> video the source code change uh, I, will, I will not say a little bit but I will not say a lot but it will change so if you have been developed applications that will be it will need update applications okay the solvers icofone whatever if you have the libraries if you were developing models that stuff is still the same okay have many turbulence models and so on and that stuff is the same just the solvers that requires some updates so let me go here and let me launch just to show you here how things work so i will launch on a steady okay you have the script that is moving files so you can open those files to see what is happening Okay, so it's running the unsteady Reynolds 200, so it's the actual case on a steady. So where I need to use there the unsteady solver, remember that you can still use the steady solver, but it's not a good approximation. Okay, so it's better to use the unsteady solver. And let me plot, I really like this. Okay, in this case, you can see better a script zero and you have here plot all. And you have it there. So we're plotting the coefficient. So we start here, we added that perturbation that we set fills just to unset the instability. So this is instead an interesting case. Okay, I really I mentioned that I love this one because if you don't unset that, use that instability, you're going to capture this behavior, but it going it, it, it is going to take a long time. So if I were recall, it would be something like a hundred seconds is going to be steady and then it's going go, it's going to go up in this case thanks to that instability we add that perturbation that in this case was the initial field but it can be anything you can add a source or whatever and unset that okay so if you are dealing with transition you can get an idea that things can get crazy if you are doing transition that you put some points and you can unset change the complete behavior okay so that is the idea in this case but wanted to show you that things work exactly the same way. Okay, so the case is working nicely. So conservation, what is going in is going out. We have all the forces here. I like to always monitor minimum and maximum values. So here we have pressure minimum, maximum. Okay, the magnitude velocity, minimum, min, max velocity and so on. And this is what is happening here. This is that we have our loop okay let me go up here let me open this case and we have the sv solution okay and what is happening here now we have the pimple piece of that stuff disappeared so don't do not use it anymore so we're doing 20 outer corrective remember if you put this to one it will be equivalent to the old piece okay that i criticize a lot that because it was redundant but you see there all pieces and then you can go to the previous one still you can change everything on the fly okay no problem 
be sure not to make mistakes. So basically what you are doing here is just when you add these outer correctors and let me go back here, you are doing more, more inner loops in order to stabilize the, the solution to try to get to this final residual. Okay, so here I'm just plotting initial and final, but if I put, if I plot here another residual like iteration two, three, four, you will see that it will be lower the residuals. Okay, so that is the idea that you try to improve your solution. And I'm putting also residual controls. So basically do a maximum of 20 iterations and Whatever is you reach this residual, stop these outer correctors and move to the next time step. Okay. But if you reach this one, do the maximum number of iterations. Okay. So in this case, it is reaching that tolerance is about five iterations. And usually this is a standard practice just to make things economical. Okay. In theory, you can use a hundred iterations there if you want. Okay. But that is very time consuming so in an economical way let's say five iterations it is okay and how do you control how fast or how slow you reach this 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 convergence here this final iteration if you reach it that can be controlled with the time step okay many factors can influence that but usually the time step is the one that is going to control that so a smaller time step means that you're going to reach faster convergence there. And just to show you here, let me reduce my time step that is done in control did by an order of magnitude. So my computer is a little bit slow today. It's a little bit temperamental today. Yeah, well, I'm running many things background. So let me go here like zero, zero, 001, very small time step. Okay, and let me see. Okay, we have the time step. See that the CFL is very small, and see that basically in one iteration is reaching convergence. Okay, but it will do the second one just to get out of the loop. Okay, so this is the trick that usually put. Usually do I do like this? I put that twenty or thirty. Put my tolerance control there for, for the outer loop. And then I choose my time set in such a way that I'm going to end in five, five to 10 iterations. So it's in a standard practice. So see that I increase by an order of magnitude. I have four iterations and this was the previous one. Okay. So as you can see, it's something economical now. So if you put a large time set, it will take more iterations there but you can reach that final time faster. If you put in a smaller time set in one iteration, you're going to reach that final, but to reach that final time, it's going to take more time steps. So it's up to you. Okay, so see that is this is our ideal time set. And probably can go higher. So I can say that a number of 10 iterations is still acceptable. So see that if I increase by an order of magnitude, it means that I will reach this time way much faster. Okay. But might or might not be the case that when I measure my final time, it will be, it will be less computing time. So see here that I just increase one inter iteration by just increasing my time set by, by 0 0.1. And remember that everything that you do is reflected here. So your residuals. So actually we can go fast. Uh, uh, we can go here and use larger. Larger taxes. So see, I go to 0 0.5 and it still is something very economical, eight iterations. Okay, and let me go crazy here and one. Okay. So one second after time set is doing 11 iterations. Okay, which is still something acceptable, I would say, is that limit of 10. The CFL, look at that, is 17. Okay, but have to be careful because that's time step you need to choose it not only from this standard practice or point of view of the linear solvers that you need to get it like in five or ten but also you need to resolve the physics here we have a shedding frequency so look at that with a five uh, time set of one second we're starting to lose some accuracy in what we're solving okay so in this case is we from we were the original was 0 0.1 now one second so basically 10 times faster 
and we double and we only double the number of iterations that we have here so this is way more economical this will be way much faster but when you look at here you see that you are losing quality in your solution don't pay attention to this oh i know plotting that but is you plot the, those values you're going to see something like that that your initial residuals will never converge because it will never converge your solution shines from iteration to iteration time set to time set and this is what you see but what we will always converge or this is what we want you have to monitor that your final residuals they need to always reach that final tolerance okay so that is when you are crunching number so we see that here we go faster but it's not a good solution and let me go back to 0 0.1 or 0 0.5 okay so and change it to 0 0.5 all those changes you see it you see it in on the fly so i already see immediately that it's converging faster and eventually here it should change or hopefully and see that it's starting to change okay so it's not only how fast you go monitor quantities of, of interest because very large time set you can start to lose the curves. I have to say that this this behavior that you are seeing, we're working in an extreme case. This cylinder, it is extreme. This is why I, I love it. But if you put airfoils or cars and stuff like that, you are not going to see this this strong behavior. Uh, personal experience, I have to say that up to CFL number of 20, 30, you have good accuracy, more than 30. I start to monitor things because maybe you are going to, to lose a little bit of accuracy. Okay, so you need to start to compute frequencies and things. But see that from 1 to 0 0.5, you, we have a big improvement going closer to what we were getting to 0 0.1 or 0 0.01. Okay, so now this is your indication. This is your time step dependency study okay you have that mesh dependency study but you can do it also for the time step and from here you can get an idea that the ideal one likely will be 0 0.5 okay okay it's a good compromise between solution accuracy but also computational time okay you can get fast solution so our solver is running okay it will stop in 200 seconds i have been talking a lot and i don't know when i will do a video <laughs> Of five minutes okay i always say okay i will start this video locally hopefully i will stop in 10 minutes and then boom half an hour okay so let's wait until we reach the final time and then well now let, let it run let me stop this stuff here so let me go here we'll stop that monitor we we see that everything is converging fine and just to show you the post processing okay we go platform okay nothing changed everything perfectly like in the previous versions okay here we have the part of your script okay it should be somewhere here open that one this one will all point out all to to all your files so it's already preset up and there you go this is what we have okay so at the beginning we have that perturbation remember that is critical to have a faster onset of this instability. So at the beginning, you see large oscillations and slowly, you now things are going to stabilize and then we have it there. So already here in 40 seconds, 50 seconds, we are in a periodic, you know, in a periodic uh, behavior. So this is now when I say, uh, people ask, did the solutions reach convergence? Well, it's very relative. If you look at this on a steady solution, now, you never reach convergence, okay, because everything is, is oscillating. But if you look at for the periodic point of view that the solution is oscillating in a periodic way, you say, okay, I reach that convergence, okay, because I have my oscillation and I see that it's periodically. Hopefully, it will be a good result if I have a good measure, the good and um, the good numerics. And if you do the same with the steady case there yes you can say if your physics is a steady you say steady solver you will see that the residuals are flat and there you can say okay this is a proper converge when you look at your residuals and so on okay so be careful about that no that what i wanted to say so at this point i think we're 90 percent okay of that transition from previous versions to open for 11 we have covered that okay so the the most important the fundamental part is this you need to get familiar with all the modular classes. So this table is a fantastic table. I love it. 
So get familiar with that. And then there are new solvers that the idea will be the same. Just put that class, identify what you need to do. So next case, we stay in the cylinder. We move to turbulence just to show you exactly the same, but turbulent case, just to show you that turbulence doesn't change. And also we're going to, to go supersonic, the same cylinder, just to show you that now using raw pimple phone or whatever it works. Then we move to the isothermal case, you know, the pipe and the BOF also, the dam break. And um, probably I will do a combustion case with C phone okay so that's all okay so i hope you you found useful this video okay so get used a uh, good exercise it will be get the original case so remember that now what website we have here you can download the material and try to convert it to open phone 11 so you get that muscle memory okay so i think everything went fine here i don't have nothing strange so you can run in parallel everything works exactly in the same way okay so thank you for your attention remember to subscribe to, to our channel or join our channel to help us you now create more material and and grow the channel and see you next video bye